When the going gets rough, are you the kind of person who likes to just stay busy with tasks, whether it's doing laundry or cleaning the kitchen? Sometimes I do that. I just stay busy so I don't have to really deal with all of the anxiety producing stuff around me. In our sermon today, Pastor g s o n is going to look at our desire and tendency to be busy with things rather than sometimes deal with the most important things. Today, Pastor g s o n is going to start a new sermon series called Unfolding Stories, Women Followers of Jesus. And we're going to look at many of the women in the New Testament and their role in following Jesus and what it means for us. And so as we come into this space of worship, Let's take our inclination to be busy. Maybe you, like me, when you watch or listen to the service, you are doing things. Let's just take a moment and be present and say a prayer. God, in the midst of a busy world, we, like Martha, want to do and to keep our minds and our hands going, and at times you call us to be still, to be present to your spirit that is already among us. Receive our worship. Move in our lives. Connect us in spirit. We pray. Amen. Let's worship in heart, mind, body, and soul as we sing songs and hear the word proclaimed today. Oh 
who's stronger Hard pressed on each side We will not lose sight Of the one who's greater One name, one name holds every victory One voice that silences the enemy One king who reigns for all eternity Welcome to Haddonfield United Methodist Church. I'm grateful that you've joined us. This is our online only service, soon to be called our on-demand service because we create this for you to watch whenever you want to uh, take in songs and prayers and to worship God in spirit. Um, We are now moving into a busy season uh, as we wrap up the, the program year on Sunday, May 1st. We are going to have our New Jersey Master Chorale concert here at Haddonfield United Methodist Church. And if you're in the area, you can find tickets on the Eventbrite link. And uh, if it's too late, if you're watching this after the concert has taken place or you're not in the area, you can live stream the concert 
in real time or at any time at the address below, HaddonfieldUMC.org. We also have a new Bible study beginning in our church starting the week of May 2nd. And if you haven't signed up yet but would like to, you have another day or so to do that. Go to the address on the website and you can study the book of James with me on a hybrid class called Faith in Action, a study of the book of James. Today, as we worship together, we also want to invite you to give, uh, make financial contributions to this church to help us continue to be in ministry with you and people all around the world. And also, if you would like to make a special gift for humanitarian relief in the Ukraine, we are partnering and offering funds to the United Methodist Committee on Relief, known as UMCOR. And um, you can use the giving link or text give to the number on the screen and you can select general fund that's how you support our ministries and you can select the humanitarian relief ukraine fund and that's how that's how you can share uh, resources to help settle refugees and also i know umcor is giving medical supplies in the city of kiev to help people who are in need as we worship god today and we go into this brand new sermon series i'm looking forward to the message g sun is going to bring us and i just Pray that we will center our hearts and our minds and just join me one more time for a prayer. And I'm going to invite you after I pray this prayer to pray the Lord's Prayer with me. Loving God, we pray for our world, for our hurting world. We pray for the people of Ukraine, people who are uh, flooding Europe and who are displaced from their homes, from refugees, not just from Ukraine, from around the world. People who are displaced or refugees in any place. God, we pray for your healing, for your wholeness. We pray that you will do the work of peacemaking in our own hearts and may it begin with where we are as we share our resources and our love. And God, I pray for anyone who is hurting or afflicted or sick or lost a loved one. God, hear the hurts and the prayers of our hearts uh, at this time. God, receive these prayers in the name of the risen Christ as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining our online worship today as we kick off the new sermon series, Unfolding Stories, Women Disciples of Jesus. The first story we will look at today is Martha and Mary who hosted Jesus and his disciples in their home. So let me read the scripture first in the Gospel of Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let me start with some questions that you probably find the same answers to these. What do you do when you meet your friends? What do you do when your family gathers on holiday? What do we do when we gather at the church in fellowship? What do Methodists do in every gathering? Yes, we eat together. We eat together with those we care for, our family and friends and church family. And eating together is an intimate act to build relationships with each other. 
Sharing food is an indispensable means of expressing our care for others. We drop off food to our sick friends as a sign of care. We send fruits to friends who just moved to a new place. We prepare food and drink to welcome people into our homes as a sign of hospitality. Sharing food with others means more than just physically feeding them because food delivers our caring, welcoming, and love from our heart. Jesus also ate with various people. He ate with tax collectors and Pharisees, and he ate with his disciples while traveling together. And in today's reading, Jesus and his disciples entered a village and a woman named Martha welcomed them into her home. I really like this story because I have two sisters and this is one of the rare stories about sisterhood in the Bible. Martha lived with her sister Mary and brother Lazarus as well, but Lazarus does not appear here. They became close friends with Jesus. They lived in a town named Bethany, one of the cities close to Jerusalem, and Jesus stayed there when he traveled in the area. And Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead in John 11, and Mary poured perfume on Jesus' feet in John 12. As food is one of the most essential ingredients of hospitality today, ancient travelers relied on the custom of hospitality. On his trip, Jesus did not carry a lot of baggage with everything he needed, but relied primarily on the hospitality of people. In previous verses in Luke 10, when he sent 70 disciples in pairs to various towns for a mission, he also instructed them to depend on the hospitality of the town's people. He said, Carry no money, no bag, or not even an extra shirt, and remain in one place, eating and drinking whatever they set before you. Heal the sick who are there, and proclaim the good news. Jesus forbids the travel the disciples from moving from house to house after they entered the home of the gracious host. They were to accept willingly the provisions they had received instead of seeking more prestigious or luxurious accommodations or food. We are not sure how many guests Martha had, but even if only 12 disciples were traveled with Jesus, it's already 13 people she needed to feed. And this is not in the text, but I'm wondering that if she knows in advance that Jesus was coming with his disciples. I'm wondering that if she had enough ingredients to feed them at home, and I'm wondering that if her house was clean enough to have the guest. These are the typical questions the host could have, and we can easily put our feet in Martha's shoes. And as a host, Martha was busy offering hospitality to her guest by preparing a meal to serve on time. She was preoccupied with getting everything ready for their meals while her sister Mary sat at the feet of Jesus listening to his teaching. Interestingly, Martha complained to Jesus directly that he should tell Mary to help her in the kitchen. But why did Martha address as Mary directly? Sisterhood is always complicated as we experience. Sometimes they are best friends with each other, while other times worst competitors against with each other. It would be possible that Martha had already asked Mary to help her several times, but Mary just didn't listen to her. So Martha was too mad at her sister to talk to her. Either way, Jesus gently chastised Martha for being too anxious about the kitchen work and said Mary had chosen the better part. Jesus' words spark a lot of discussion and controversy. What is the better part? Didn't Jesus care about all Martha's hard work? To feed him and his disciples, 
is listening to Jesus' word better than serving him with her hands. Maybe you know many Marthas and Marys in your life, and perhaps you see yourself in one of them. How would the churches and the world survive without their Marthas? And I think these questions come from our human tendency to think in black and white about everything, wanting to choose one way or another, especially the English translation, Mary has chosen the better parts, as pressure for us to define what is the better part. However, did you know that the original Greek word does not use a form of comparison? Jesus simply said, Mary had chosen the good part, and it will not be taken away from her. Jesus reminded and invited Martha to choose the one necessary thing for everyone, the thing that Martha forgot when she was distracted, worried, pulled in, ma in many directions, uptight and upset and resentful. When she lost her focus on Jesus, she also lost the joy of serving. Let's not get the wrong idea here. We are called to work and serve one another for God's kingdom, but we are not saved by good works. We are saved to do good work. And the point here is the priority of our heart. And we all need to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to him and spend some time with him. That's because that centers ourselves to focus on why we do for what we do. When we lose our focus on Jesus and only look at ourselves and busy to do the tasks we want to do, it is easy to be preoccupied with our own agenda, be resentful and complain about what others are not doing, just as Martha did. When Jesus called Martha twice, I feel Jesus' compassion for her. Martha, Martha, do not push yourself too hard about food to prepare food for me. I don't come for fancy dinner here. I'm here to spend some time with you. Just come and listen to me. I welcome you to join me so that I can feed your soul. Jesus broke a social barrier for Mary and Martha. Mary was doing something that women usually did not do. She was interested in opening her mind to things beyond the typical role of women in the kitchen. She had chosen the traditional student's position at the feet of the teacher. It is radical that Jesus affirmed Mary's choice to learn from him. Jesus saw Mary as a disciple, a learner, and a follower, just like other male disciples. It also gave a permission to Martha to be free from her social expectations to perform in particular ways. Martha was resentful of Mary, not Lazarus, for not helping her in the kitchen. In fact, Lazarus was not even mentioned in the story. But what if Lazarus was gifted in cooking and wanted to provide hospitality for their guests with Martha? Martha and Lazarus could have been working together and learned from Jesus sooner than later. Jesus did not blame or judge Martha. Rather, he empowered Mary and Martha to make their own choices. Martha chose to care for Jesus by cooking, but she could not force Mary to make the same choice. If Mary wanted to learn, she should not be forced into the kitchen and Jesus affirmed Mary's choice to learn from him. While growing up with two sisters, I haven't thought much about social limitations as a woman in my life. And I didn't realize how I used to define myself in a box as what others expected me to be or to do like Martha. I didn't realize how Traditional ideas of gender roles have impacted me, shaping who I am until I faced unequal treatment at work in terms of my salary or promotion. It just did not become my story. I was blind until I experienced it. However, it took so long time for me to answer to my calling to ministry. 
when I shared my calling uh, with one of the Korean pastors, he tried to persuade me to reconsider it as my husband and I were studying together in a seminary. He said there are certain specific expected roles as a pastor's wife. So whenever I had a desire or willingness to do ministry, I, feel, I used to feel inadequate and unqualified. I have met countless excellent women leaders in the churches who made things happen, who made the differences like Martha, but I had never seen female pastors in my childhood. Women were always welcome to serve in a certain area of ministry, like in caring ministers, children's ministers, serving food or working in nurseries, but not as a senior pastor or elders of the church. I know in Methodist tradition, women served as preachers from the beginning, and the women started to be ordained as a minister in 1866. But did you know that there are only 13% of female pastors in the United States? I'm not sharing my experiences to claim myself as a victim. The point I want to make is that everyone has blind spot until we experience it and we live with a different worldview that are shaped by our upbringings, backgrounds, educations, family cultures, and social status, or what we do for a living. But importantly, everyone is on a journey of becoming who God calls us to be, loving God and loving our neighbors. And Jesus helps us on a journey, just like he pointed out Martha's blind spot and set her free from human-made social expectations. She limited herself. And today we learn from Jesus who listened to Martha's concerns and worries carefully, but gently shifted her eyes to see more important things out of love and compassion. How did Martha receive it? The text does not tell us more, but she did not turn on her defensive mode or stop serving Jesus. It was not a place of bl blaming or shaming or judging, but Jesus created a space of transforming out of love for her. When we witness or face some incident of injustice in, the, in a society, we tend to think and easy to assume that it would be an individual's problem. However, if similar patterns of incident occur over and over, there must be something wrong in the system beyond the individual level, and we need to pay attention about it. As we begin our new sermon series about women disciples of Jesus, I hope and I pray that God leads us to find our own blind spots and give us the courage to make a small move together to dismantle many isms in our reality, in our society, including sexism, racism, classism, ageism, and ableism. May Jesus give us a gentle spirit to speak the truth in love and compassion as we sit at the feet of Jesus and learn from him. As we continue our journey together to love God and to love others through our serving. Dear friends, I am so grateful for our journey together to love God and to love others. When we are overwhelmed or distracted by many tasks given us, Jesus brings our attention to Him and reminds us why we do what we do. Every work you do for God is precious and valuable, but one thing really necessary is sitting at the feet of Jesus who leads us to the transformation of our hearts, our community, and the world. So go in the love of God and the grace of our Jesus Christ and the peace of the Holy Spirit who makes a difference in your life and in others' life today and the days to come. Amen.